vocals about this in the anime community, and to be honest with you, I've been teaching Japanese and Filipino weaponry since 1996. 21 years now. Until we started doing anime cons, I'd never seen one of these or heard of it. Um, it's a multi-tool. It's not really, really that sharp, but you use it for digging and for, there's all kinds of different things you can do with it. Um, but everybody's familiar with a short knife. There's really nothing else that makes it cool. And we do have to get to the most deadly ninja weapon of all time. The shuriken. Shotgun means small blade. And this is one everybody knows, because the ninja takes it and he goes zing, and he goes out about 175 yards and cuts off three people's heads and comes back and he gets it. Oh wait, that was blade. <laughs> That's a little bit different. But the shuriken is a razor sharp piece of steel, and popular mythology has it that you took this and every edge was razor sharp, and then you coated it with the world's most deadly toxin, where the slightest touch and you're dead. Um, this is mostly a myth, and I can prove that real easy. Here it is. We just coated all of it with the world's most deadly neurotoxin. All right. Here, you carry this one. Let's go on our ninja mission. Where are you putting this? Where are you going to put it? I mean, the only time you're going to need it is when your life is threatened. And so you're on a dead run running away from a horde of samurai chasing you through the castle with swords. And while you're sprinting at full speed, you're going like this trying to find this where the slightest touch is going to kill you. No. <laughs> like, well, you put it in a hard case. Yes, guaranteeing you can't get it out. Ever. And if you buy one of those ninja costumes online for $39.95, they're really cool. And they have a pocket sewn right in here to put the throwing star. Yeah, that's a bad place for that. Well, remember, they climb and they do gymnastics to get into their places. And I have yet to be able to do a somersault and not have a with a four inch out. piece of steel right here and not have it stab me in the abdomen or in the sternum. You're going to get hit. They didn't get put there. Um, <laughs> but these were actually surprisingly popular and common, not just with the ninja, and not just with peasants, but with the samurai class as well. And they came in different shapes and sizes. You've seen the eight-pointed ones. The, the four-pointed were actually more practical, and they end up being more common. For one, they were a little bit easier to shape. But for another, the easiest way to carry the shuriken was in the hakama, this divided skirt, the apron, the apron, the divided skirt, the samurai, and other Japanese. On the back, there's a flap here. It sits on top of the back of the obi, and it is stiffened reinforced fabric. So what you did was you cut a slit in the top of the fabric, so you could put this inside the slit in the fabric, and the reinforced stiffened material um, didn't bend and get so you could actually carry that safely. And again, back to the, we're walking out on the street Saturday night, and I'm strolling with my wife, and some psycho, wait, we're shorthanded. My wife is the psycho. Now I'm in trouble. You forgot your anniversary, she's angry. <laughs> so I've got the sword belted on, and everybody knows, in order to draw the sword out, you have to reach across with your right hand. That's where a lot of the arrest techniques, Miss Aikido Lady, Sankajo and Yankajo, that you grab and it was designed to stop sword draw. So I don't want to reach like this because bad guy's going to cut me. And they're cueing off of that movement. So instead of reaching forwards, reach, reach behind you. Here, bad guy comes in with a knife and you go, no! Because if you hit them with a four inch razor sharp piece of steel, that's a distraction. And then while they're going, ah! Then you draw the sword and go, Shoot, fight's over, we're closed. Thanks for coming. Be sure to tip your waitress. <laughs> yes, that was from Ninja Turtles 3. Yeah. Yeah. At least you got that. No fear. Yeah. Um, as far as the whole, this is the ultimate weapon of death. Um, is anybody familiar with handheld thrown weapons, throwing knives? Do you know what the effective kill range of a thrown weapon like a knife is? You can, maybe 10 feet. Maybe and I'm not saying that you can't hit somebody and kill them with a perfect shot. The longest recorded kill in, in world history with a knife is from World War I. It was an American soldier. It was a, a Native American. 
Indian. Took his, you familiar with World War I knives, the trench knife? Had the, it looked like the brass knuckles yeah. welded to it. You couldn't throw that. This guy, the trench fighting, out of ammo and everything. So they were baiting each other across the lines. German guy was up railing on him, and the Indian took his knife, flipped it end for end, and threw it 87 yards and hit him in the throat. 87 yards. That's amazing. So, as far as just throwing something normally for effective stopping range, 20 feet. Once you get beyond up to seven yards and further, um, your odds of actually stopping somebody go way downhill. So, these were good for 20 feet, and you can throw them farther than that. When we practice, that's I can drop these in a bucket and. 25 yards, because I have a lot of free time. 75 feet. And we had children's summer camp, so <laughs> we did that. And you know what? The kids' summer camp was so much fun, the adults wanted to have a summer camp night of their own where we did all these fun games, throwing spears and doing shuriken. But um, there was one other part of this. Oh, yeah, the poison thing. Because everybody knows you. these were coated with, like, neurotoxin, where the slightest brick would, would kill you. Not to rain on anybody's parade, but no. does, does anybody, and you probably do, does anybody know throughout world history what the number one substance to coat a metal weapon in history is, to, to poison your enemy? Number one substance in world history. So please don't say the arrowroot frog from Brazil. No, because they didn't export that. Number one substance. Poop. Poop! Yeah. Fecal matter! Yeah, get them sick. Because the wound would turn septic. Always. So, here's your ninja mission. You need to take a throwing star with you. Well, yeah. the bathroom. Here, you carry that one. <laughs> so you're going to wipe poop on this and then put it inside your cloak. No, I don't think No, you'll poop. smell. Can't you see it? You, you're on your mission. You've broken into the guy's house. You you're hanging upside early. down from the rafters for hours waiting for him to come home. Smell this guy poop. walks in. Slides open that Fusama sliding panel, steps in and goes, Ew, it smells like ninja, and closes the door. <laughs> it smells like ninja. And there you have it ninja weapons of death. I did that closing line at a convention once where Johnny and Bosch was on next. And he wasn't a ninja turtle, but he was a Power Ranger. And he's had some roles as a ninja, and he was sitting at the table waiting for his turn and went, and there you have it, smells like ninja. And tossed him the throwing star and he went, ew! <laughs> Got him! <laughs> and then we just say, you guys are awesome, have a good night, you're dismissed. And Johnny stood up and said, if you leave, I'm throwing my poop at you. <laughs> guys are nuts. But that was, does anybody have any questions? I've been kind of just talking. You guys had questions earlier, and then you realized that I'm just nuts and kept going. No, it's fine. So, did, did, does anybody have a question? I mean, like, I, you know, question? No. Yes, sir, you came in late. I'm not reviewing the panel for you. 